QuickBooks Online invoice form. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We're gonna be using the free QuickBooks Online test drive, searching in our search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive, selecting the item that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version and verifying that we're not a robot. Zooming in a bit by holding down control up on the scroll wheel, currently at 125% on the zoom in. Note that if you hit the cog drop down, we're currently in the accountant view as opposed to the business view. We will try to toggle back and forth so we can see those two views. We're going to be duplicating some tabs up top, right clicking on the tab to do so and duplicating it. Right clicking on the duplicate a tab to duplicate it again. Going to go to the tab to the middle to open up the report as we do every time. Reports on the left hand side under the accountant view and then balance sheet report as that's thinking tab to the right reports on the left and the income statement or profit and loss range change up top i'm going to select the starting point and type in the range as easy as possible i believe is to just say 010122 january 1st 2022 is what it stands for two tab tab and then 123122 december 31st 2022 run it i'm going to close the hamburger and then go to the tab to the left and then back down uh, i'm sorry scroll back up and then just the dates from 010122 to 123122 january to december and run that one close the hamburger that's the setup process we do every time back to the first tab where we're going to do our navigation now if i hit the plus button up top we've been looking at our uh, navigation of the customer cycle so the customers is a is a term for quickbooks that's going to mean which side of the table we are on in any business transaction we are going to be selling to the customer so that means that we're going to be uh, assuming at the end of the process typically having money coming in for goods and services we provided to the customer. Now remember, your cycle here will differ depending on the type of industry you're in. So if you're in a gig work situation, you might get paid directly by a platform and you might be able to use the bank feeds to record the deposits as they hit your bank with possibly a bank deposit uh, that would be generated through the use of the bank feeds. That would be like the easiest system. And then a cash based system, we said that's the one where you might have a cash register and use a sales receipt and then organize your cash. And then you'll have to have another step of depositing it or you'll have an accrual based system. And that's the one we're going to focus on now, which will have the invoice form. So in other words, you're not going to use an invoice unless you have a, a type of business that's an accrual based business. And that would be something like a landscaping business, bookkeeping, law firms, oftentimes anytime you have to do the work first and then uh, bill the client or invoice the client, then you'll be using the invoice. Now the invoice is another one of those terms. You really gotta be careful on which side of the table or how you're using the term. In normal language, you could say that if I'm going to charge a customer, if I did a bookkeeping work, for example, and I'm gonna send out an invoice to the customer, I could call that a bill. I could say I'm billing the customer for the work that I did. That would be okay to use a normal, even accounting language. But when we're talking about QuickBooks, we have to label the forms to be indicating a specific side of the transaction. So the invoice is the form that we're going to use to bill the customer. <laughs> the bill is the, is the form that we're going to use when we get billed from a vendor for works that we did for somebody else. Again, interchangeably, they can be used in normal language. And also the bill is even more specific than that. And within QuickBooks, the bill is a form that will increase the accounts payable. 
So even though we might get a bill from a vendor, when we enter it into our system, we might just pay it with an expense form or a check, or we could enter it as a bill. The vendor's not, it's a little less confusing because it always means it's the data input form that we're gonna use to charge a, a customer. So let's go into one and let's just create one here. We'll go into the invoice. I'm gonna say this is for uh, AAA. I'm just gonna keep on making up AAA as a customer because it'll show up at the top of our customer list. And then notice that uh, the type of detail that you're gonna want on the invoice will be dependent upon the type of industry you're in. Some types of businesses, they have a lot of repeat uh, customer clientele and some, business, some businesses don't. It's a one-time type of transaction. So if you're gonna have repeat transactions, you're gonna to wanna to have as much customer data as possible. So uh, we went through some of the customer data before, but the minimum information you would need would be uh, the name. So I'm just gonna keep that for now as we go through the invoice. And then if we're gonna email it to them, then clearly we would need their email address. Emailing is a common form to be sending out the invoice these days. Billing address, if applicable, the terms represent when you expect to be paid. So if you're going to be sending out an invoice, that means you did work. We imagine we did bookkeeping work or something like that. We're going to send out the invoice, which is billing the client. And then we got to expect when they're going to turn around and give us money. So a standard range would be 30, 30, 15, 10. So we'll keep it on net 30 here. So that means the invoice date is 12, 22 in our example. We expect to be paid by uh, 221 in that example, which is 30 days later. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom here, which are the products that we sold. Now, typically, you're going to want to add a product and service, even if the invoice is for a service item. And this goes to kind of your billing, for example, if you do uh, things like hourly service, you could have an hourly rate and make your item like an hourly rate. I just charge an hourly rate and that's fine but you might wanna give more thought uh, in terms of how you, can how you can group your service items in such a way that you can, you can build them out a little bit more easily. So for example, for bookkeeping, you could just say that I'm gonna do bookkeeping and have an hourly rate for bookkeeping. You might have different hourly rates for different types of activities you do in your accounting business. Uh, or you can try to say that I'm going to record the accounting by how many transactions I do. So you might try to make a grouping saying that this is uh, so many accounting transactions. If you if I did within you know 50 to 100 uh, transactions, I'm gonna charge you this much if I do that. And then you can actually count the transactions. That's a little bit more concrete sometimes. And it sometimes makes the billing a little bit more easy to do if you can set things up that way. And it, it makes it a little bit more concrete for the client who can see you know, a schedule instead of the just hours are a little bit more arbitrary oftentimes. But the major distinctions you're gonna have down here are gonna be, are you talking about a service item or are we talking about an inventory item? Let's start off with the service item because that's the easiest thing to do. So I'm gonna hit the drop down. I'm gonna add a new item and uh, we'll talk more about items later. So we'll go through the items fairly quickly, but these are the foundational things, these items that you're gonna need to populate an invoice. I'm just gonna call this service, service item one. I'm gonna copy that and then go through here and say category, no category, description, service item one. I'm just gonna say we sell it for whatever, $100. And then it's gonna go to a service income account. So that means that's the income account it's going to hit when I record this on the income statement, whether it be taxable or not. Oftentimes, service items are not uh, taxable. So I'm going to in the United States. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go down here and say it's a non taxable item and then done. And so there we have that. And so let's go ahead and save it. We don't have to deal with any inventory or anything like that. And then I can put the amount of service items like two. It's non-taxable, so I don't have the tax line checked off. And then I could add another one. Let's just do the same one, but you could have different items here, of course, and so on, so for different lines. And so some, some types of businesses could have very long invoices, like a construction business. You might be populating your invoice based on what you did, if it was some kind of job cost type of system. So you might list out the products that you purchased and this kind of stuff. Uh, to make the invoice, it'll be dependent upon the type of business. But you can add lines here. 
you can uh, clear all the lines, you can add a subtotal if you need a subtotal within here, and then you can actually change the groupings of the line by moving these around as well if you need to populate these or, or adjust them if you have a long invoice. You can have a message, a message on the invoice, so they have one thank you for your business as the default. I'll just put hi here so you can, and then message on the statement, so that you can have another message on the statement, and then any attachments if you need any attachments cancel it you can clear it uh, you can print or preview so if i preview it let's look at it, what it, it will look like here print or preview and so now you can see kind of what it looks like there's a little message i put down at the bottom and so there it is there you could get into customizing of your invoice we might talk about that a little bit more later but uh, we're just looking at the basic data input at this time and so you can make it reoccurring. Uh, you can uh, customize it here. And then you've got the more options copying it. So if you had a long invoice and you wanted to copy it to another one so that you can make the data input a little bit faster, you can void it, you can delete it, uh, transaction journal, and then audit the history. We can save it and then we can save and send, which means by email typically. That's often the way you're gonna send things out these days or uh, save and close and save and share link here. So let's just think about the transaction that's going to happen with this. It's an invoice. So when you think invoice, you think accounts receivable is going to go up. AR is going to go up. The other side is going to be driven by the items, both these being service items. Therefore, it's going to go to uh, a service income account, no inventory. So that's a pretty straightforward transaction. Let's save it and close it and check it out. So I'm going to go to the next tab on over. I'm going to run the report to refresh it. And then it's going to go into the AR accounts receivable, clicking on the A to the R accounts receivable, scrolling all the way to the bottom. There it is. So we have an increase there. Clicking on it, that drills us down to the source document. So the source document is making the transaction. Notice how easy the data input is if you have these service items already set up. We'll talk more about how to set those service items up later but you want the data input to be as easy as possible, even if you're the one creating the invoices. You don't wanna be agonizing over billing someone and how much you charge and this kind of stuff. You wanna think about what your billing process is, how can you streamline that, how can you make your, your production of the billings as easy as possible. Closing this back out, scrolling up, and then going back to the report. Let's go to the next tab to the right, and then run this one. And this time it's in the, what did I say? Service item that we put it into. So it's right here, services and the income account of services. And there it is there. Scrolling back up, back to the report. Also, if I go to the first tab, we had accounts receivable. That means people owe us money. That means we got to get paid from them. So we have to track the accounts receivable. This will have a sub ledger that'll break out the accounts receivable by customer. I'm gonna to go to the tab to the right, right click on it and duplicate it. So we can run another report just to see the sub report and how it ties in. So we'll open that up. We'll go down to the reports and I'm gonna close the hamburger and scroll down to who owes you. And let's this time look at the, the customer balance detail. Let's do the customer balance detail report. And so then I'm going to scroll up and change the data. The data it should be good. And so there it is right there. There's the invoice. It's broken out by customer. And at the bottom, 558152 should tie out to what's on the balance sheet, the 558152 here. Now you're also going to track the invoice internally to try to collect on it. So if I go to the first tab, then we can find this in the sales area, which sales means revenue. That's like our customer cycle information. In essence, it would be in the get paid paid area in the business view, which we'll take a look at the, at the end, hopefully, if I remember. And then within here, you can take a look at all the sales transactions. I can close up the hamburger, hold control, scroll down a bit, and I can organize my sales transactions by the invoices, open invoices, for example and there's the AAA, I would expect the next thing to happen is I get paid by it and then I can receive the payment. Uh, you can also within here uh, have your other options. You could duplicate, send it again. So right, we might, want, might need to send it or send a reminder 
uh, in order to try to collect on the payment. We can also sort and find this in the sales area and we can go to the invoices tab directly, which is once again, basically sorting out our uh, invoices and we can group them by the overdue and so on. And then we've got our actual customers. So if we had a, if we wanted to contact an actual customer, we can go here or again, we've got this nice sorting item up top so I can look at my open invoices, but this time it breaks out the customer and then uh, the open invoices. We might then be going in here at some future point and taking all these people that owe us uh, money and create statements for them, for example, to try to uh, help to collect on the funds. So then if I was to go into this, the next step would be to receive payment. I can go there to do that. I can go into the actual invoice and there's the invoice where once again, I can go to the receive payment. Now let's make another invoice and this time one with inventory. Inventory adds a lot more complications. So I'm gonna hit the plus button and let's make another invoice. And this time I'll just say BBB and we're gonna set that up. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time setting up the customer information, but I will say they're gonna be subject to taxes and the taxes by default will be down here by location. So, uh, so which is right here. So we're gonna be dealing with the taxes, which is sales tax in this case, in the United States sales tax, similar to like a usage tax. We're gonna say the same uh, date and we'll take 30 days again. The only difference down here is I'm gonna make an inventory type item. I'm gonna make a new one so we can see exactly what we're doing. Let's make it an inventory one. And yes, I'm making a new one each time because I'm logging out and back into this, this test file. So it deletes everything going back into it, which I think is actually good because we can then make these things as we go. It's going to go into an inventory asset account uh, on purchase. Well, let's do this first. Well, I'm going to say there's a quantity on hand. Let's put 10 on hand. This is the beginning balance. You wouldn't normally put the items on hand unless you're first starting the company file because you would be purchasing them. But I want to have some inventory on hand so that I can sell them with an invoice. And the reorder point, I'm just gonna put zero. That's when we're gonna, how the inventory goes down to a certain level, we order it back. The inventory asset, that's the account that will go up when we purchase the inventory. It's gonna go up by the 10 items that I purchased, which is gonna be a journal entry made by the system here. And then the sales price, let's say it's gonna be 250. The sales account, when we sell it, this is a sales type of form. So it will be recorded here to sales of product income. Notice it's a different income account. We're breaking out our income by service item and product item. I'm not breaking out my income account by customer, for example, or getting too detailed in the types of things that I'm selling. I'm not calling it inventory one item income account. I'm just calling it service items. We're gonna say that it's taxable here. So I'll keep that there. And then the purchase side of things, I'm gonna say we purchase them for uh, $100. That's when we purchase them. We purchase them for 100. We sell them for 250. The cost of goods sold is the account that will be impacted when we create the invoice, removing it from assets to cost of goods sold. I won't put a preferred vendor. Let's save and close it. And then let's say that we have uh, two of those. That gives us a nice 500. It's a taxable item. So everything else is somewhat uh, similar, but the transaction is going to be a little different here. What's going to happen? Well, it's still an invoice. That means accounts receivable is going to go up. The other side, it's going to go up by the full amount, which includes the tax here, which now has been populated. We talked about how to turn sales tax on in a prior presentation, which means first you got to turn on the sales tax. You have to put the location in place and all that kind of stuff. And then we've got to deal with the items, which we set up the item here, which we said was a taxable item. And then we have to think about the customer, which would be whether they're going to be uh, exempt from taxes. So by default, usually they would be subject to the tax based on location, unless they are exempt in some way. And then you would have to put the exemption here. So now the tax is being driven by the item because we set up the sales tax and the item is telling them it's going to be taxed and the customer is not overriding that <laughs> in any way, is basically how it would go. So it's going to go up on the AR for 540. The other side is going to go to the revenue account, which is driven by the item, but not including the sales tax of 500. The difference of the sales tax, $40, is going to go into a payable account. And the reason for that is because 
we are the collection agency, meaning the tax for sales tax is in theory a tax on the customer, not a tax to us as the business. Therefore, we're not going to record revenue of 540. And then when I pay the sales tax and expense of 40, which would still net out to 500 on the income statement. But instead, we're not going to hit the income statement at all with the sales tax item because it's not really an expense or revenue to us. It's it's just we're just a collection agency, right? So we're just going to collect the $40 as a payable and then we'll pay it at some future point. And inventory is going to be going down, not by any amount on the invoice, but driven by this item by the $100 per item. So $200 here and uh, the cost of goods sold is going to go up. So there's kind of a lot going on here. And this is the same kind of transaction that happens when you're checking something out at a grocery store. If you have a manual checkout or if the checker's checking it out, then you can see how brainlessly it easy it is just to scan your thing. But the system's actually doing a fairly complex bit of calculations here. There's kind of a lot going on uh, within the system. Also, you're going to have the BBB customer account is going to increase, which is the sub ledger and the sub ledger for inventory because we're doing a perpetual inventory system is going to be increased in the units of inventory, not just the dollar amount of inventory. So a lot going on. Let's check it out. Let's save it and close it. And then I'm going to go to the tab to the right and run it again to refresh it. It's fresh again. I only work with fresh things. I work with fresh reports like I eat my fruit. It's got to be fresh. Okay, whatever. We're going to go down to the bottom. Oh, hold on. I'm in the wrong thing here. Just here we go. We're going to go into the accounts receivable. A to the R scrolling down. And so there's our invoice for BBB. It's at 540 going into the 540. And so that's the full amount, including the sales tax. Let's go back, closing this out. And then I'm going to scroll up to the top and go back. And then let's go to the tab to the right to the income statement, run the report to refresh it. And then this went into what did we call this one? We put it into sale of product income. There it is right there. So I'm going to go into that one and then hold control, scroll down. Notice it went into here only for $500, which doesn't include the sales tax. That's the point. If I scroll back down or zoom in on it to the source, doesn't include the sales tax. Closing that out, where's the sales tax? It's on the balance sheet. I'm going to go back to the income statement here, tab to the left again, hold control, scroll up a bit, going down to the liabilities section. So I'm in liabilities section. I'm looking for the uh, liability account for, I think it's the board of equalization because it's the California. Notice you would think they would just call it sales tax payable, but they are naming it by who you're paying because that might help you to to know if you have multiple sales tax items. That's my uh, my theory as to why they do that. Let's go into here instead of just calling it sales tax payable, which would make more sense from just a reporting perspective. But there's the forty dollars right there. All right, and then I'm going to go back up, and then we know that we have inventories also going down because we have a perpetual inventory system. So if I go into the inventory asset. We go into that holding control down scrolling. We see now this this top one. I think this is the one we entered when I put the inventory item in the system and it recorded. I, I put the beginning balance in. It had to record a transaction here. We'll get into that more in the second half of the course when we start a new company file. But the thing we're looking at here is this decrease from the invoice of two hundred dollars. Notice that that two hundred dollars is not on the invoice but the invoice was the thing that recorded it. The invoice knows what to record because the item says that we bought them for the $200 in essence, although there's a, a flow assumption that's being used. But I'm gonna close this, close this back out and go back to the left. And then we're gonna say the other side is on the income statement and cost of goods sold. So cost of goods sold, going into the cost of goods sold, there's the $200 right there as well. So a lot of accounts affected uh, on that transaction. And you can see if you're tracking the inventory in the system, it gets somewhat complicated to track. You got to make sure you got the, the system uh, set up. The net impact on the income statement, the profit and loss then is the increase 
of the sales, the 500 in this case, not including the sales tax minus the cost of goods sold, uh, which was 200 in this case. So let's go back to the first tab. We also know that we have the accounts receivable is now at 612152. If I go to my sub ledger, which is all the way to the right, this is my inventory. Let's right click on this one and duplicate it and open another sub ledger because I, I uh, closed up my sub ledger. Let's go to the reports and close up the ham boogie hamburger. And then we're going to go down to the customer balance detail again. And so now we've got uh, AAA and BBB. So BBB is included now. They owe us money. The point of this ledger, I just want to point out at the bottom, ties out to 612152. If I go back to the balance sheet, there's the 612152. So we can see that the, the sub ledger is breaking that number out by who owes us the money. In practice, clearly, we would once again be tracking that on the left hand side typically by going to our sales items and searching all of our sales items here, tracking the invoices or looking at the invoices or going to our customers and possibly sorting our customers by open invoices. For example, there's BBB right there. We would expect to be receiving a payment from them at some future point, And that'll be a next step, which we'll do in a future presentation. Also, if we go back to the balance sheet, the inventory account is here. If I go then to the uh, is this the inventory account? This is customer balance. No, I opened this twice. Let's go to this one on the right. I'm going to open up an inventory account reports inventory. I'm just going to type it in there. Inventory valuation summary. So now we can see, let's make it as of 12.31.22 and run it and close the hamburger, hold down the control, scroll in. We've got the inventory. So here's the quantity of inventory. I think we put 10 on hand and then we sold two of them, right? So we've got our inventory and we've got the units of inventory being tracked in the system because we're using a perpetual inventory system as opposed to tracking the inventory outside and using a periodic inventory system. So that total comes up to 1,396.25, which should tie out to this number here. And note that that number represents what we buy them for, not what we sell them for. So that's going to be, so that's uh, the, the invoice. So the next time we're going to go into the next step, which would generally be the receiving payment. But before we do, let's go to the first tab. Let's hit the cog drop down and switch to the business view, just so we can see where to find some of the same stuff on the business view. So if I go up to the get things done page, this is our home page. And then our reports were found in the uh, business overview information. And then the reports, that's where we found our balance sheet, our income statement, the inventory report, and the who owes you money reports. And then the, the get paid and pay area is where I would find what I would call the customer center or the sales cycle center but it's down here, both the vendor center and customer center are in here. We're up top in what I would call the customer center, which they call the get paid area. So get paid. Why you can, you can tell your customers, why are you contacting me? Cause I'm trying to get paid. <laughs> anyway, so in the customers, this is the one where we could sort the open, open items and then invoices. Some customers would probably like that in any case. And then the open items, this is where we can sort our invoices down here uh, as well. And then that transactions one is a, and it's in a little bit different spot for some reason. They put that down here in the bookkeeping area. It's in the transactions up top. So if I close the hamburger, we've got all transactions. This is where they kind of sort all the transactions. If I hit the plus button that are in the customer area. And so you can kind of sort, you can sort those items here, either with the filtering options up top that we've seen in a prior presentation, or, you know, with your filtering options down here, oftentimes we're kind of filtering for invoices uh, when we're dealing with customers.